everyone, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be doing my February wrap up. I only ended up reading three books in February and pretty much all of them were at the very beginning of February because I fell into a reading slump halfway through. It has literally taken me a good two or three weeks to read 100 pages. So, <laughs> reading at the moment is a bit slow paced but let's just talk about the books that I read in the beginning of February. So the first book that I read was Force of Nature by Jane Harper. This is the second book in the series but both of the books that are released so far can be read as standalones. The first book is called The Dry and I was sent this by the publisher because I was taking part in a blog tour so there is a full review of this on my blog if you want to check that out I will leave it down below. But this follows five women who are forced to go on a corporate retreat as a form of team building exercise which is everyone's worst nightmare. <laughs> no one should be forced to do group work as an adult please stop. <laughs> but while five women go on this retreat, only four return and you need to find out what happened to Alice, the woman that went missing. I don't normally read mystery novels but I wanted something quick and as you might expect when you want to solve a mystery you tend to read things quite quickly so that's why I accepted this one to review and I'm really glad I did because I ended up really enjoying it. Now the main thing that I liked about this was how flashbacks seem to run alongside. The chapters tend to switch between the investigation and the events of what actually happened. So you have this sort of narrative that switches between trying to figure out what happened and the events playing out so you can kind of see how close the investigation is to the actual events. I feel like I'm just repeating myself. Basically you get to see more than the investigators do so you can kind of see whether they're on the right track or not. And as well in this it's not easy at all to figure out what happened because all of the characters have something shady about them. None of them are clean cut, they all have something in their background that could be suspicious regarding this case and it's kind of just a test to see which order you rank them in to which one could have broken first and caused such an event to happen. And you never know whether it was all just an accident all along or whether it was something much more sinister. I think as well in this the setting and the weather really sets the tone because it's a team building exercise where they basically have to go hiking in the wilderness somewhere. So the second that anyone gets lost it's just a massive disarray and it's quite urgent because there's a lot of danger around in the wilderness. And with the weather being really stormy the urgency only rises as the days pass and you can really feel the tension rising with every page you turn. There were a couple of things that I didn't like such as the romance if you can call it that. I wouldn't call it that but I don't know what else to call it. It just wasn't necessary at all and I think a lot of books just randomly throw in some romance element because they can and it's just not needed at all to make a good story so I wish they didn't do that. And as well there was one scene in particular which touched upon the sexualizing of teenagers but it did it through the perspective of a middle-aged man. I think he was middle-aged, either way he was older than a teen. So it was just a bit uncomfortable to read because I don't think that was the right perspective to be talking about things like that through. So I didn't like those but it did really work as a mystery novel. I didn't guess what had happened and yeah I really enjoyed it so I rated it 4 out of 5 stars. The next book I read is one for university and that is Things Fall Apart by Chino Achebe. This one follows a conqueror who is a great warrior in his clan and it basically just follows his life in which you get to see his clan being threatened by European outsiders. This one was so fascinating to read on a cultural level because it's set in West Africa and it's not really a culture that I've read much about so far. And so getting to see the different aspects of culture like the songs they sing, the sayings, the way that they use drums to communicate, the traditions, the religions, everything like that was just so insightful and it's one of those things where fiction doesn't have to teach you anything but if it does I see it as a massive bonus and this, I felt like this did to me in a way that wasn't tedious at all or not even intentional although it probably was because it's Chino Ojebe. I don't know. <laughs> Just seeing this other aspect of life that's completely different to my own worldview and the way that I live, I loved it. All the way through I wasn't necessarily adoring the book. I did enjoy it but I didn't love it until I got to the end and then that changed everything because the end is so harsh and purposely jarring that it just completely changed how I looked at this book. 
It completely disassociates itself with the Conquest story, which you've been following all along. And it does so in a way that really highlights the severity between the culture clash around the time of imperialism and the dangers it could cause. And that disassociation right at the end was just the right twist to really highlight the danger, the severity, the different ways that one scenario can be completely different regarding someone's culture and background and where they come from, their privilege, different things like that. It just completely changed the way that I looked at this book within three pages or so. So yeah, I ended up rating this one four out of five stars as well. And the final book that I read in its entirety in February was The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This is an arc that was sent to me by the publisher and oh my god guys, this book. <laughs> It's been so long since a book has left me itching to read, like I've enjoyed all the books that I've been reading lately but not enough for me to physically want to pick it up at every single moment. It's been more of a case of I want to read rather than I want to read that book in particular. However this book came along and it changed that entirely. I was, oh, from the very first page I was itching to keep reading and I just sped through this book even though it's a lot longer than the books that I've been reading lately. This is set in Cairo and it follows a woman called Nari who is a con woman and she doesn't believe in magic until she accidentally summons up a Jin warrior which then takes her off into this fantasy world and despite it being a new fantasy world it still does interweave the culture that was originally there in Cairo. You get to see all the different aspects of culture in all the smaller details as well like the traditions, the clothes they wear, the sayings, the songs, the rituals and especially in the languages as well. So many different languages are mentioned and accents and things like that. And even though they're the sorts of details that I would be completely new to, it was just so rich in detail that it didn't cause a problem in trying to understand. I felt like I did understand everything and even though I will never be able to understand it on the same level as someone who came from this sort of background. I've heard a lot of bloggers and readers who are from the same background, religion, countries, different things like that. I've heard a lot of them saying that this is an accurate representation and I'm going to try and find some of their reviews as well and link them down in the description box because they will be able to provide a better insight than I will ever be able to. We have Nari who is without a doubt one of my new favourite characters because she's strong, she's sarcastic and yet in a way she's not always brave. You do get to see her being really scared of the situation she's in as you would expect. You get to see her vulnerabilities, you get to see her accepting help when she needs it rather than trying to do everything on her own which is something that I really look up to in a way because it is hard to do that. She was such a realistic character and I just want to be like her so much. <laughs> it is a dual perspective book so you do follow Ali as well which I'm still not sure about. I do like Ali but I am liked Nari a bit too much for me to enjoy his perspective as much if that makes sense. So I did slow down a bit in that respect because whenever I got to one of his chapters I just want to get back to Nari's instead. However I did like the dual perspective in the way that you could see the same sort of scenarios through different people's perspectives and you get to see what they think of each other rather than trying to assess the situation from just this one person's mind. You get to see political feuds, family feuds, magical feuds, all different aspects of a world that is just so well built I honestly can't fault it. Oh. In case you couldn't guess I absolutely love this book and I rated it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think by the time this video goes up I might have a full review of this so if I do then it will be down in the description box if not it will be coming soon so keep an eye out on my Twitter for an update of when that's up. <laughs> and I thought I'd quickly mention the books that I'm currently reading because I have been reading it for about two weeks now even though it's really short but that is The Passion by Jeanette Winterson. This again is one that I have to read for university and I'm not going to say much about it because I honestly don't know what to think of it yet. I absolutely adore Jeanette Winterson's writing style. In fact I've marked off a page where I want to read out this one sentence because it's just <sighs> how she words things seems a little bit like magic. <laughs> now the scenario that the quote is taken from isn't one that I can relate to at all because it's about training to become a priest. However just the way she words this one sentence for some reason really stands out to me and I love it so this is what it says. Although my heart is as loud as hers I can pretend no answering riot. I don't know why I love that so much I just do but yeah the way she words things blows my mind sometimes but the story itself I'm not sure about yet. It's one of those books where I really want to research into the background and just Jeanette Winterson herself before saying more about it so that's what I'm gonna do. 
But yes, those are the books that I read in February. Let me know if you've read any of them, I'd love to know your thoughts on them. And also let me know how many books you managed to read in February, with it being a shorter month. Those two or three days count a lot more than people realise. <laughs> I'd love to know what your favourite book of February was, because then I could just add more to my TBR, as always. As I mentioned before, the full review for Force of Nature will be down in the description box, along with the full review of The City of Brass, if that's up already. So go and check those out if you want to. I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!